Dice Tower Tonight, Episode 9. January 17th, 2018. <laughs> that took way too long. That's what happens when I didn't have a, like, a topic at hand. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Dice Tower Tonight, a video cast about board games and card games, and especially the people who play them. On tonight's show, Tom's not telling me what we're talking about, so you'll find out when I do. But I think at the very least, we'll play show and tell with a few recent games and then take your questions live. I'm Eric Summerer, and here's your host, the Hector to my Miguel, Tom Vassell. What does that even mean? Have you seen Coco? No, I it's haven't. It's an excellent film. Really, really good. And uh, my kids enjoyed it as well. They actually wanted to see it a second time. Um, and the, the soundtrack is great, except my wife didn't come see it with us. And so I have to stop playing the soundtrack about halfway through because there's spoilers if you continue listening. There's spoilers in the soundtrack? I, yes. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to elaborate much more than that. Just in the way that songs are presented, you would know certain things about the, uh, the plot of the film. But it's, it's but wonderful. See, you've, sp you've spoiled it by saying there's spoilers in the soundtrack. <laughs> Not just, the, just looking at the track list, you wouldn't know. But if you listened to it, you might be able to figure things out. Okay, folks. Well, if you're watching, thanks. Uh, this is a live show that Eric and I do bi-weekly. Um, and we're just going to talk about games. We have different things going on. Um, there's going to be... A, I have some people who are helping me. We're going to be working on changing up how this looks a little bit. And we're going to eventually have some guests on. I'm going to get... All my good lights are at the studio now, so they're not necessarily here at home. So for Eric looks better than me, which drives me nuts. I mean, he looks better than me normally anyway, but his lighting looks a little better. But that's okay. I turned I on a so... desk lamp today. That's, you know. Yeah, but I look so white in this thing. Eh, there's well, no way. You are in a white that. room. I have a little more texture behind me. That's what it is. We cleaned the room. Um, you can see there's the whole wall is going there. Yeah. Uh, I threw away so many toys, but there's still. Okay. Well, let's, let's do this then. <laughs> there we go. Now I look a little, I'm still white. Now I just got white with yellow in the background. <laughs> but at least people can look at some games when they're feeling sad. There you go. Is my camera out of focus too? What is going on here? Well, you're a little um, soft focusy. I don't know. Maybe that's on purpose. I don't know what the deal is. I'm switching cameras. Which looks better, A or B? You tell me. Does that look better? Not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Camera three. Oh, wow. Wait, how many cameras do you have? Well, I just have a lot. This one's too dark, right? It's it's dark, but it's it's clearer. This is scintillating programming, by the way. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave this one on. But that just means I need to look up at that a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to move your face up there. Sure. Move my face wherever you need it to be. I will. Okay. Well, we'll we'll get to work. Okay, folks. So <laughs> Eric is alluding to the fact that I'm like surprising him on what's on the show, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. It's not that big of a deal. Um, could be the lighting in the room. Well, yes, I know that. Don't listen to Eric. I won't. Too much glare. Got it. Actually, I have an idea. Eric, why I have my idea, why don't you introduce your first game? Sure. You know, you're not going to be listening. So why would that be any different than normal? Um, so... The first thing I want to talk about is a uh, it's a deck based game from Game Right. This is called uh, Stowaway Fifty Two. This is part of a series um, called Card Ventures. It's you know neat little package. I picked this up. Uh, it's about ten bucks. You know, pretty inexpensive, and it's a single deck of cards in that nice little pull box. Um, and there are four basically suits. So you you make four piles. There's a blue and a purple and a, a green and a red. And it's a storytelling game. Um, basically, you just grab one of these at random and start reading the story. So you are hiding under a counter on the alien ship. There is access to the air ducts under here. While hiding, you hear alien orders being shouted over the intercom system. And then you see aliens running out the door. Do you follow the aliens or do you climb into the air ducts? Pretty simple. You decide. So if you decide to follow the aliens, you go to red number 12, and you've, you've actually scored this card that you started with. There is 
a point value in the upper corner of, of that card. So you've scored that one. Yay. Um, and now I go to red number 12, and I have now discovered something new. Quietly, you follow behind some aliens marching down a corridor, and you continue. The object of the game is to hit every single card in the deck. So you have to sort of figure out what the path, the proper path is to weave around and and not repeat yourself. Because as soon as you access a card that you've already scored, you're done. And then you count up your, your points. Most of the cards are only worth a point. Um, some are worth five. There's some that are even worth 15 or 20 points just because you managed to stumble onto something interesting. Um, I was sort of fascinated by the concept, but I don't know how great it works in execution it feels very random because you can start anywhere in this deck yeah, what's it doesn't the point really, of that it doesn't really have a through line it's just they wanted you maybe it's because they didn't want you to start from the same point every time knowing that all right i have to choose point choice a then b then a then a then b then a like they didn't want you to memorize the whole initial sequence it's basically a choose your own adventure deck Yes, but um, here's the other problem with it, Eric, is it's a boring choose-your-own-adventure. It's like, you see some aliens. Do you want to climb in a ventilator shaft, or do you want to go in the elevator? You go down the elevator, there's a locked door. Do you want to open it or go through it? I mean, there literally nothing exciting happens the entire time. Right, because there's no arc. Like, there is no beginning, middle, end, because you can start from any point in the whole thing. Uh, so this was far less engaging than I hoped. The production's nice. The You know, it's these nice, colorful cards. Um, but as far as a story, there is no end because your your goal is simply to make it through. There's there's an ending card. So after you've gone through the whole thing, you total up your score and it tells you if you earned between 150 and 199 points, there's an ending. And if you score more than 200, you have a different ending. And if you get the full like 300 points, you get a, a nice ending. But I don't know. It, it's just... I got to give him points for creativity and presentation, but it's it's really not as engaging as I was hoping. That's stowaway fifty two from Game Right. One hundred percent agree. Um, yeah, that's just not a very interesting game at all. Yeah. And I really had high hopes for it. I was like, "Oh, it's Game Right. Oh, I love their stuff. You know, yeah. this choose your own adventure." And it's just like it's like a choose your own adventure where they take out the story, and it's just the members a pattern memorization. Who cares? Right. Yeah, it, it really is memorizing what sequence you need to go in. So you haven't played the pirate one yet? I bought only one of the two. I don't think I'll be seeking out the pirate one, no. It's a slightly better than that one, but they're essentially the same thing. All right. Okay, so uh, folks who are watching, I'm only, I'm only bringing in live comments and questions that have to do with what we're talking about. Question for me and Eric, we'll get to those at the end of the episode. Right now, we're just talking about games, specific games. And that was Eric's first game. What's your second one? Oh, oh, okay. I'm on deck again. Hang on. So, second game is one that I've been waiting to play for a while Tiny Epic Quest. This is from Gamelin Games, it's part of their Tiny Epic series from Scott Alms. Um, this one is sort of an overworld uh, adventure. Just to clarify, it's Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Yes, I don't think they like to point that out, but it, they're certainly like graphical elements. If they don't want to elements. point it out, then they shouldn't have made the sword and the shield and everything look exactly <laughs> like Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Yes, yes. So the, the big draw here is that there are what they call item meeples. Um, let me try and drag out a couple of... While people. you're uh, pulling out these item meeples, Eric, yeah. do you know that they're launching another Kickstarter in a few hours that also has item meeples? Yeah, they're doing the revamp of Tiny Epic Defenders, correct? That now has item meeples involved? No, it's Tiny Epic Zombies. What? It's like no. three words together <laughs> that I cannot stand. Zombies, the Tiny Epic, the. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't know. These oh, item meeples hold items, um, some of which are very, very small and easy to lose. Like, I, I've got this whole bag of, of items in here that are supposed to go on a rack, and they, they don't really fit on the rack. But anyway, these item meeples can hold things, and that gives them specific abilities as they move around the map. You've got all these map cards, uh, and you are, are moving around trying to score points by uh, completing tasks and earning spells, and the whole structure of the thing is sort of a push-your-luck thing. So you've got you know castles, and you've got... Uh, goblin portals that you can you know hunt down goblins 
you spend a day phase moving around the board, moving your different item equals around. And it's uh, each person, when it's their turn to lead, basically, they choose a specific type of movement. So maybe you're moving diagonally, maybe you're moving in straight horizontal lines or vertical lines or around the edge of the board, like on a boat. Um, and then everybody gets to move their meeples in that manner as well. After everyone has chosen, I guess it's after four of those have been chosen, then you resolve everything in sort of this push your luck manner. You start rolling dice. And uh, based on the symbols that come up, you may be able to defeat goblins. You may be able to earn magic power. You may be able to um, get resources that are going to help you. However, you can also take damage through this process. And uh, if, it's, if you're, it's your turn, you choose to either go home and take whatever winnings you've gotten or stay in and possibly earn more stuff. You will earn things on other players' turns as they continue to roll. But if you decide to stay in, you are in until it comes back to your turn again. So especially with, a, with higher numbers of players, you are stuck for a while. And if things go terribly, you can get really hosed uh, and, and then earn virtually nothing. Uh, if you fail, if you get knocked out, you lose your hit points, uh, you get nothing for the round and, uh, and have to reset pretty significantly. And for a game that only lasts five rounds, that can really be bad. If, if, you, get, if you bust out, it's very hard to claw your way back up. And in fact, I, trying not to bust out, went home and, you know, sort of saved my progress. And uh, I had a couple of guys working on a, a temple. And so I earned virtually nothing in one round because I saved myself and then failed in the third round. So I didn't get anything on that round either. And then was really totally behind everything. So ultimately, I'm sort of burying the lead here. That was my issue is, is that this is so much of a push your luck game. I wanted it to be more of an adventure. And that push your luck aspect can just make everything go so far awry um, if the dice hose you that I was soured a bit. Now, I understand this. I didn't do well. Um, and so that always is an issue. But um, I still think this isn't quite the game for me. It's almost too dependent on how well your fortunes fall in that uh, in that resolution round. Um, because if you fail, you don't get the cool items and stuff that are going to make it easier for you to do better and score more points. I like the presentation. Um, I like the item meeples, but I prefer other tiny epic games. And one other, Tom's always complaining about the tiny part of tiny epic. And in this one, I felt old, Tom. I couldn't read half the text on this thing. There's small little symbols about how many people can be on particular spaces, how many players can be there. Um, how things are triggered. There's magic spells you learn, and it's all symbol-based. So, like, level one spell is a serpent. And instead of putting a one somewhere on the board, you have to figure out where that serpent is on the board. And then there's a scorpion that's level two. Where's the scorpion? I don't know. Like, is that the scorpion? No, that's a spider. Yeah, okay, I can see that. So I was a little... This was almost too tiny for me. Um, I... If you're really looking for a, a tiny adventure, I I don't know if I'd recommend this the way I exuberantly do Tiny Epic Galaxies, though. Okay, well, actually, I slightly disagree with Eric here. Yeah. Uh, part of this is someone asked here, you know, about the player count. Now, Eric, how many players have you played this with? Four. It is so much better with two. Okay. This game is actually really fun with two, I think, because... You can still be messed up by the other player in your turn, but it's not so critical. When you're right. playing with four players, it's very possible for somebody just to totally run you over. Totally, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, th too much chaos between turns. Right. A lot can change. You may be totally fine and have plenty of hit points. Uh, but, and the way damage is dealt out tries to mitigate that because it sort of goes from if it's your turn, you get damaged and then. The next damage point goes to the next player in sequence. So if you're a four-player game, you might be shielded a little bit. But still, if somebody rolls three or four damage on their turn, you're going to get hit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just think it plays better. The movement cards work better in two-player because you get to use more of them and such. Mm -hmm. And so, 
that's that. I I, like I'll it. have to I'll have to try it that way. Okay, Eric, what's your third game? I'll look for questions about this one. Did anyone ask anything? Someone said you need tiny epic reading glasses. Apparently. Yes. Um, oh, last game for me today is called Fantastic Gymnastics. This is a mass market game no, that my son picked up. No, no, up. no. We need to pause. And we're I am not allowing you to talk about this game unless you play it live right now. Yes, sir. Come on, you can do it. Tiny Epic. No, this is not Tiny Epic. This is Fantastic you were Gymnastics. Prepared. I knew it. So, this is uh this is the little guy hanging on on this device. He has electrodes in his hand. And he actually makes an electrical connection up here at the top. Okay, uh, you turn this on. Oh, and I should show. Down here is a Velcro landing pad. Once you've turned this on, there are two buttons right here, and one button you push it, and it makes his legs go like that. That's it. That's all it does. This is a totally physics-based game. Let me straighten out the landing pad. Um, the other button will release him when he is ready to be released. Now, I'm going to try and do this one-handed so that you can see it on the camera. I am not that good at this game. My, my son um, laughs at me. But anyway, so you go like this. Come on, get over there. And then eventually, come on. He's supposed to go in a circle. It could be because I'm holding it. Come on, go over there. Get over there. Get over there. Get over this thing. Okay, hang on. Okay. I'm going to set it down slightly so that, okay, you can't see it quite as much. I'm going to tilt this this way. We're going to try it on the table. Get over I had this. I did this earlier. Come on. Ah, now he's spastic. Okay. <laughs> oh, he's hit the mic. He hit the mic. Okay. okay. Something uh, you've never heard in a gymnastics thing. <laughs> Come on. Okay, and then you let him go, and he flies off, and he's supposed to stick the landing. Um, and I, has, I still have not gotten him to actually stick the landing. Yeah, my that sticky the landing is almost impossible to do. It is. It, it's a very, I mean, there is a certain skill to it, as I just demonstrated in the negative. But uh, it's it's just a silly dexterity game. But for being such a like physics-based thing, I'm surprised at how well it actually works when my son does it. Um, my son wants to show this off at, at a convention, um, and it, it should be fun to do so. I, as mass market silly games go. Eric, we need you to unmute your microphone on the computer screen. You muted me. I, I did. Okay. I actually was muting you in the one computer. I didn't realize it muted you like completely. So what I was I saying was is that it's fun. Uh, it, it's, it's silly. <laughs> and... Uh, um, my son has had a hey, good deal of, of fun just making this thing flip around. And he's gotten him to land uh, somewhat consistently. So there is a skill aspect to this. I've seen oh, videos you YouTube, online. You can uh, watch yeah. people and they just do it like that. They're like, yeah. I think, and I want to reach through and smack them. <laughs> it, it's easier, I think, when it's on a tabletop. I was getting him to work well, but just arranging it on my desk here was not. I almost thought about setting it up at a table and bringing you over. Anyway, it's called Fantastic Gymnastics, and it's, it's pretty fun. It's from Hasbro. Yeah, my kids like that one. All right. Well, it's time for a game show. Okay, this is going to be a real-life game show. Uh, and I brought in – so we're going to call this Judging a Game by its Cover. Oh. And the judger is Eric. 
Well, that's now, so what I did was I have all these games from Essen, right? We're yes. never going to look at all of them. So how do we choose which ones? <laughs> Eric okay. is going to choose the next game that I look at from this pile. Now, I'm still going to be – this is not the next game I'm going to review tomorrow. I have a queue of games, right? But this, right, yeah, yeah. So I, I grabbed six kind of random games. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show Eric six of them. Okay. He's going to eliminate two of them just on looks alone. Okay. okay. The next four I'm going to open up and – We'll look a little bit at a few of the components, then you'll eliminate two more, and then we'll go into more detail in the last two, and you'll pick one. Oh, this sounds fun. Okay, this is. And, and I, I told you it wasn't a gotcha thing. You're so you're so um uh, paranoid. Uh, yes, you're paranoid. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay, history. So we're, I don't. We're gonna go through all six games here. Okay, so the first one here is Eye Catch. It's by Maureen Hyrone and Sheila Bonick, and. In a very, very funny turn of events, if you look in the back, you see the, the blurb description written in uh, French, German, and um, Italian. And wow. then in the English one says, English rules included. <laughs> okay, that's a good so start. I do know that it's two games, one box, and it's around 10. That's all I know. All right, that's game one. All right. I'm going to show these in, in size, increasing size. We'll okay. see if, if size affects Eric at all. The next one is Jump In. This one is, uh, it does have English rules, but I don't know anything about it. It shows like a die with arrows on it and different letters and numbers, but there's actually no English description. On the front, still no English description. So you're just going by the words Jump, jump in. in. Got it. That's game two. Game three is Slowpoke, the card game, a classic card game with a leisurely twist. <laughs> this is our take, says the Haywire Group, on the classic game of Old Maid, featuring a colorful collection of nature's most laid-back creatures, animals such as seahorses, koalas, basset hounds, and everyone's favorite Slowpoke, the Slaw. Chill together for a lighthearted, leisurely card game. It's the perfect activity for children four and up. All right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Game four, Alchemistry. It, I don't, uh, whether the glare on these uh, shrink is. <laughs> yeah. You are a young and promising student in the prestigious College of Magic. You received an invitation to participate in the most famous alchemy competition of the era to test your skills, collect the ingredients scattered around the fair, and brew exceptional potions to impress the jury. Discover new potion formulas and improve your mastery of variants, various materials using rare ingredients. Trade the gems you found with merchants under the counter to make a profit. Every last bit helps for repaying your student loan. Sadly, tuition for high-end colleges were expensive even in medieval times. Here's a little bit of the back. Doesn't really show much of the game. Some cards with cubes. Okay. I like cards and cubes. Game five called Invisible Ink with a cutout in the box here that gives you some of those red glasses. Oh. Hidden behind sunglasses and equipped with Invisible Ink, the agents convoy encrypted codes. Who will be the fastest to decipher the sketches? In this party game, the double agent needs to roll the die, put on the glasses, and whip out the drawing pen. So far, so easy. What makes it difficult, though, is that he can't really make out the drawing through the tinted glasses, but those who are guessing aren't necessarily better off. It actually comes with multiple pairs of glasses and different cards. A sand timer. It looks like perfume. Huh. All right, and some chips. Can I just choose that one now? No, actually, I just decided, as we're changing the rules of this game that we've never played before, yes. that we're also going to have audience participation in this one. Okay, sure. So they're going to be able to limit one. Because I was just thinking, Eric might pick the same type of games all the time. So we, we, got, we can't have that. Right. Okay, and the next one is Hexcalibur. Trying to, <laughs> so much glare on these. All right, so <laughs> Hexcalibur. This is from Gen X Studio. And this one says, War. The young Arthur Pendragon has ascended to the rule of Throne of Britannia, but his rule is threatened. His half sister, Morgase, advances from the north with an army of Saxons. Meanwhile, hordes of pagan warriors have emerged from the forest, ready to reclaim the land that belonged to them centuries ago. Soon the horse's hooves will shake the earth. The dragons will fight in the sky, and the brilliance of the sword 
Excalibur will blind the unjust. Are you ready? Yes. Excalibur is a game of combat and conquest with hexagons. Choose a faction, Logers, Cumbria, or Pagans, and decide the fate of brave knights and legendary monsters. Very easy to learn, and with an even easier setup, Excalibur allows you to relive an epic clash in a little more than half an hour. So here's how we're going to do this, folks. You're not voting for the one you want to keep. You're voting for the one you want to go. So we're going to put four of these away without, I mean, two of these away without even opening them. So again, we have Hexcalibur, Invisible Ink, Alchemistry, Slowpoke, Jump In, and Eye Catch. Okay, so two people, I mean, you guys are gonna vote for the one you want out. So the one <laughs> I see with the most will go out. So we're gonna let the, the uh, audience vote first there because that will actually give you uh, more options, right? That you don't have to worry that you're picking the same one as they are. Uh, sure. So I'm looking around here and I'm seeing a lot of different people. Okay, so there's three apparently people here are not as big of a fan of the smaller games. Woo, I'm seeing lots of things here. All right, unfortunately, this one looks pretty pretty much uh, unanimous. They're getting rid of eye catch. Oh, okay. So we'll never know what this description <laughs> of the game is. Who knows? All right, so eye catch is gone. All right. All right. By the way, folks, I, I know so we're here just looking for the uh, gift certificate giveaway that will come at some point during the show. Stay tuned. While I am tempted to force you to play the variant of Old Maid, I think I will eliminate Slowpoke. All right, all right. Well, hey, no, this, this doesn't bother me. I would have played it with my kids. This and one had looks, a lot of votes, but there are some team people who you just got all upset because they were team sloth is what they were calling themselves already. The illustrations are adorable. I, I, okay. Saying, folks, that these will never get reviewed. The one that we pick will get reviewed. Okay. So now here we go. Let's open the boxes, jump up, jump in. Now we're just doing like a quick overview of the components and we will eliminate two more. Okay. <laughs> okay. So jump in has some rules. Doesn't look that complicated. Some rules on both sides. It comes with a 12 sided die, but there is instead of a, there's only one through 10 and then there's a couple arrow symbols on it. You have to run around the table. I bet you do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's only if it makes it to the next round. We find out oh, okay. exactly. Missed. And then a bunch of number cards. These have the same number around the outside with the letters LC. So I don't know. Man, this is kind of curious. I actually, sometimes when I look at a game, I can tell how it's going to be played. I have no idea on this one. Are they, are they two-sided? Are those cards two-sided? The other side says jump in. Oh. So that's everything that's in jump in. Okay, so that's still possible. Huh. All right, let's open up this uh, alchemistry for a couple reasons. One, let's stop glaring it up here. You can look at the box. Oh, there we go. The glare is mostly gone. Mostly. Don't those witches kind of look like they're making dye? It, yes, they're making tie dye. They're they're dyeing their outfit. <laughs> that was a a thing back in there. Burn the witch. She made a tie dye. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Comes with a red bag. Okay. Oh, look at these cubes. That, this is hard to tell, but see the cubes are like gold. All That's right. neat. And lots of different translucent. These are like better than normal cubes, right? Wow, yeah. If you're going to have cubes. And these are some kind of chunky. These are not bad components here. Okay. Well, okay. I take that back. This looks boring <laughs> as I'll get out. That, that does look boring, yes. However... Okay, if this guy came up to you and offers you a gem, you should say no. <laughs> that he is probably, a cursed gem. He probably has a van running in the background. <laughs> um, you... This is kind of a thick piece of cardboard here. This better not be money. Oh, I'm opening this up. We got to take a look. This Part worries money. me. Uh, maybe it's not money. They're just It's a bunch of 20s. Okay. Here's a board. This board probably tells you how to change stuff and other stuff. I don't know. 
another board. And then the, the main board of the game. Oh, no, I lied. It's just a scoreboard. That's a big scoreboard. It is, it is. Okay, well, remember you saw those big, uh, chunky, chunky pieces. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so that's uh, that one. Now for the one Eric's excited to see what's inside. Yes. Invisible I want to see you. Ink. You have to wear one of those sets of glasses. Oh, okay. That that seems legit for the what we're doing. They're like wrapped together with uh, Hugo's amazing tape, I think. No, it just ripped. I lied. <laughs> it just the cardboard. There we go. Woo! <laughs> All right, so there is six pairs of these glasses in there. Yep. Oh, this looks like fingernail polish, doesn't it? I don't think this comes out. Oh, oh wait, it's a highlighter. A highlighter. But don't. Yeah. Is my nose yellow? Uh. Oh no, no, it's fine. There's a timer with some already punched out pieces in it. A really gigantic die that shows a pencil and words, or sometimes both. And then there are some decks of cards with multiple languages in. So this one says fence and garden, and then probably the same thing in another language. This one says baseball and tennis, and this says brush and hair. So obviously a lot of cards. Looks like they are double-sided cards with two words on each card. Okay. Yeah, I think... Yeah, okay. And then some rules and, of course, some silicon. Yes. No, it says do not eat right on there. I know it says do not eat. Why did I say it? Every time I see that, I'm like, I wasn't thinking about eating it, but now that you mention it, I'm so hungry. <laughs> okay, so that's invisible ink. So now we're at the last one. Hexcalibur. Wait, hasn't it only been two? No, 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 I showed you Alchemist 3, Jump In, and Invisible Ink. How quickly okay. you forget. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hexcalibur has a pretty hefty rule book here. Whoa. Um, it's it's dual-sided, right? But it's still... Uh, well, they don't number the pages, so that's good. Well... Also, you can punch out. I mean, that's why it's called hex caliper, right? Because there is a lot of sheets of hexes. Oh, look at these hexes! They have like wolf scratch marks on them, and these hexes have knights. And these guys are guys who just found out they have to pay more taxes. Mm -hmm. Not shoot! Wow! I mean, I, I gotta say, these are some pretty cool looking hexes. They're very colorful. Okay. And then there's some big ones here, which I don't know. Maybe these are your starting castles or something. A whole lot of those. That's pretty much the whole game, except there's some dice. And uh, there is a small deck of cards. That has some nice artwork. Getting that on it. So that looks pretty good. All right. Wow. Now, once again, folks, we are voting for one to get rid of. All right. So we're going to get rid of Hex Caliber. Or we're going to get rid of Jump In. Or we're going to get rid of Alchemistry. Or we're going to get rid of Invisible Ink. It's time for the vote. <clears throat> and then Eric will choose another one to get rid of. This is and harder. I don't want to get rid of one. My curiosity we'll is going to get the better of me. Each time we do this game, and we'll do this again in the future, I wonder, like, will small games be consistently discriminated against? Yeah. Uh. Uh, the it answer to that simple. is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jump in is Jump in out. is out. <laughs> Come on, guys. These are so much easier for me to review. I, I want to know what those things do. Oh, okay, fine. Um, oh, I'm going to eliminate Hexcalibur. All right, all right. But I'm telling you, I might review this one soon anyway. I, that, actually, I think, that one had yeah. me going. It looks pretty good. I, I think probably that may be part of my reasoning. I know you're going to get to that one anyway. You'd be surprised how many games I say that about and then never get to. <laughs> All right, so we're tempted here. Uh, I haven't yet figured out a way to do a tiebreaker here between you and the people at the end. Uh, well. But we'll see. We'll see what the people say. I'll, I'll let the people uh, say, and you could... <coughs> Gesundheit. 
when it gets to the end of this, we will allow the people to pick which one gets thrown out, but you have the opportunity to overrule them at the risk of not being known as the voice of the people. Wow. That's no very pressure. complicated. Okay, so here's how Invisible Ink works. So, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to try to quickly decipher from the rules as to how the game plays. This is a very informative thing to see. Yeah, well, this is how I do this, right? Okay, so one player is going to be a double agent, and they're going to make a drawing, and other people are guessing. So for each person that guesses correctly, the double agent and the first player who figures out and names what it is will get points. But there are forbidden code words that cause you to lose microfilms if you speak these words out loud. Apparently, microfilms are points. Gotcha. Okay, so there are two categories of cards. There are code blue and code black. Blue is easy. Black is hard. So let's crack one of these decks open. Each player takes a pair of glasses. Wait a minute. What do the glasses have to do with anything? I don't know. Maybe you're writing with the highlighter. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I look kind of like I'm uh, Bono here, right? Um, but anyway. So you will take this. You'll put a certain number of points in the middle of the table. That keeps track of how many players are in the game. The person with the best eyesight goes first. <laughs> with or without the glasses. Um, blah, blah, blah. The double agent will put determine who puts on the glasses. Oh, because when the glasses are on, you can't see what's on the white paper. Because apparently they're drawing with a highlighter. And this, it's white, Eric. It's white. What? Uh, okay. I first learned about these when I was a kid through a Captain Crunch cereal box contest. You had to figure out where Captain Crunch was, and you won like a whole lot of money. I really worked hard at it. Today, <laughs> I would have been like, the odds of winning are so low. But Okay, so, the dub so he rolls the die, and it so if he rolls a pencil, the double agent puts on the glasses, and the other players don't. So the double agent can't see what they're drawing. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So if I'm drawing, but I have to draw with this on, so I can't really see what I'm drawing on the paper. Right. I like that. <laughs> or you can see what you're drawing. Everyone else puts on their glasses. Or everyone huh. puts their glasses on. <laughs> that, that's the double symbol. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So there's two words. So... Uh, there's a blue code word and a green code word that one's worth one point and one's worth two points. And so you're just trying to guess what the words are. Oh, so people are just guessing. Yeah. So that's what it is. So it's basically Pictionary, but with these glasses involved. But what's the forbidden word concept thing you, you mentioned? That's a good point. Um, oh, code black. That's if you play with the black words. They're green and black words. If someone figures out the green words, but if someone says the black word, they lose a point. Okay, okay. So, for example, baseball and tennis. Remember I told you? So, baseball is when you yes. have to get people to guess. But if they say tennis, you lose a point. Because you'd probably make a circle and make the two arcs. And that would be a, a tennis ball or a baseball. And if somebody says tennis, right. you've and then this one is fireworks, and the word you can't say is rocket. So gotcha. That's pretty oh. much the game. It's a pretty simple that's, party game. That's an interesting twist. It is, and this is made by by Hook, and they make some pretty good games. So it's a pretty good quality company. Okay, so that's the first one. Maybe I'll send. The winner of one of these to Eric, too. That, that could be something we could do in the future. Then he will review it on the channel, <laughs> which is my way of getting Eric to actually do a review. Even though you did do a review of what's that game? Duff Fables. Is it this game? There it is. We, so we played the final, final chapter of that today. The kids had a snow day. So we were all the way through the whole game. Are you kidding? Isn't there like 50 things? It's seven chapters. I mean, it's there. It's uh, usually about half a dozen for each chapter, locations, pages. So what's your kid's final opinion on it? Oh, they still love it. They immediately wanted to reset and play their own adventures. And uh, 
yeah, keep keep playing. So it, so it kind of beats my semistics. Yeah. For them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here we go. This is Alchemistry is a resource optimization and tile placement game. In this game, you are trying to transmute gems into other things and get victory points. You're going to collect them and store them on your board. And we, don't forget, each player has their own board like this that shows how different things are transmuted into each other. There are gems, common ingredients, rare ingredients, and ether. You're going to put cubes on your board so you can see how many, so everyone's able to see how many cubes you have of each type at any given point in time. Do you want to know what the cubes are? They're emeralds, amethysts, sapphires, and rubies, silver, copper, oil, and sulfur. Okay. Oil? Okay, but okay. Oh, those are common ingredients. You are using those to make potions. Gems, you're just, are cool. And then there's some rare ingredients, gold and sal ammoniac. Then there's ether. So you have this potion deck of cards. So let's crack open the oh. potion deck. Because each time we get to another level in this, we're going to go to a higher <laughs> a higher thing where we get to see more stuff. We're, we're digging deeper. Oh, uh, the potion. This is unfortunate, actually, that everyone is the same picture. Oh, it's that That's same guy of, every time? I think it's a guy, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the potion deck. So anyhow, you are going to be collecting resource cards, and then you're trying to get them to complete the gem merchant cards or potion cards. Still not sure what these, I think, are potions, maybe, these cards here that show various things. These cards actually look a little better in person than they are on the video themselves. So to finish a potion card, you are going to have two cards that are overlapped on the table in various ways, like this maybe. Oh, okay. So you're placing these cards on top of each other, um, and you are changing the potion formula. So the potion might be like this, and now you're like, no, this is now the new potion. So you're going to be changing how, what the formulas that potions need as time goes by. Uh -huh. So that's one thing. And each rare ingredient you use will get you extra points. It will move you up on a mastery track, which I think I showed you. That's on this, some mastery track. And the more rare ingredients, the farther you move up, and it looks like you get you bonus points at the end of the game. So on your turn, you'll take a pouch. You'll take a primary action. And these are all mentioned on your board. You have a primary action you'll do over here and a secondary action over here. You have to do both actions. You can't do one, two primaries and two secondaries. You have to do one of each. Your primary actions are take two cubes from the bag, take a rare ingredient from the rare ingredient pile, or do some trade gems with the merchant on the table. The secondary action is complete a potion, transmute stuff, or scavenge. That's another take two cubes from the bag, but you can only keep one and you put the other one back. So I guess you could get three cubes on your turn if you wanted to. Okay. And that's it. There's a few other minor things, but you're just basically moving cubes around and doing that. And I guess the whole thing is, you know, it's partially on this cool potion thing where you're changing what the potions need to finish them off and at the same time selling gems to the merchants. All right. So, people, this time you're going to vote for the one you want to keep. You can keep Alchemistry or you can keep invisible ink and then Eric will decide whether to overthrow you or not. <laughs> so alchemistry or invisible ink, pick the one you want, not the one you don't want. A lot of people are voting for hex caliber, but you cannot do that because Eric got rid of it. <laughs> I, do you feel evil I, a little bit here, Eric? Can I, can I change my mind on that? Okay. All right. Well, actually, it's not very one-sided. Ah. I'm counting these as fast as I can. I'm impressed that you're able to keep track of that. Well, it's not too hard. Okay. <laughs> Stop voting for Hex Cowper. We can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eric, it was fairly close, but decisively it is for... Alchemistry. They want to keep alchemistry. They do. So now the question is, will you overrule them or not? Oh my goodness. Is it worth overruling? That's up to you. 
You know what? I've already I've already messed this up because I didn't keep hex caliber apparently. So, you know what? I'm drunk with power. I'm going to overturn and we're going to go with invisible ink. Which Eric, I feel like picked that from the very beginning, but okay, fine. <laughs> So Invisible Ink. So here's what we do. I'm going to play this before the next uh, Dice Tower tonight, and I'll review it then. I'll talk about it then. And then when I'm done with this, I will send it to Eric, and he will review it when he eventually gets it. Wow. That's what we do uh, each time. These games are eventually going to Eric, so he can't just pick games for, for you know, giggles. Because <laughs> they're coming to him. That's a new twist. Okay. He, well, so far you're happy because you like the idea of this one. I, I'm excited, yes. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Alchemistry bag. <laughs> You're not going to sort everything. Well, no, no, no. I didn't mess them up too much. And I'll tell you what. So now, that being aside, as I look through these, which ones would I review? Hex Caliber is obviously the one that looks the most interesting to me. Mm -hmm. But I'm dying to know about that jump in game. <laughs> yes. I want to know what those numbers mean. <laughs> yeah. Okay, folks. It's time for our contest. Now, listen carefully. If you are watching this, and it is not the 17th between 9 and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can't enter. The contest is over. But if you do want to enter, you need to email DiceTowerLive at gmail.com. Not DiceTower at gmail.com. DiceTowerLive. DiceTowerLive at gmail.com. And you need to put in the code word as your subject entry. What is the code word? I'm going to put it into the chat. I don't even know what it is. Well, I mean, it's it's not a big work deal. Just so that it's a way I can sort them out like, and and see who wins. Excellent. Okay, so put that as your as your subject line, and you'll be entered in. If you don't hear back from me, that means you didn't win. <laughs> if you <laughs> did win, you'll hear back from me and a fifty dollar gift certificate. Thanks to cool stuff. So we'll try to have some prizes on these shows, folks. Sometimes it will be a game. Sometimes it will be a gift certificate. If you are watching and you're like, I want to give a prize out on Dice Tower tonight, then please contact me and talk to me about it. Okay, so there's that. Hopefully you found the code word. At this point in time, Eric and I will take questions. We have a few minutes left, so if you have any questions for us. Again, folks, we're going to be working on the setup here of how everything looks, although it's starting to look a little better for me anyway. Um. You don't need to have anything in email body because it's a, a, a gift certificate code. I don't need your address or anything else. I just need uh, an email from you. If I see your email spamming the thing, seeing multiple entries, I will automatically delete it. I can easily catch that. The code word was written in the chat. All right, so you have to go and look for it in the chat. It was written by me. You could ask other people in the chat. Maybe they'll, they'll tell you. And the email is DiceTowerLive at gmail.com. Okay, what are you most excited to see at CMON Expo? We haven't decided if we're going to CMON Expo yet, so there's no excitement there anyway, because also that's in May, so that's still pretty far away. <laughs> um, this person says, how does it feel to be drunk on power, Eric? Oh, it's, it's well, I, it's wonderful. I mean, the, the rush, the, the just it's thrilling, actually. Eric, do you tend to pick games that look boring? Over games with fantastic art and interesting mechanisms. <laughs> I feel like a very poignant question. Okay, we didn't actually get to the mechanisms of Hex Caliber. You, you know what it was is that I wanted to know more about the mechanisms of uh, the alchemy game, but I knew Tom would eventually get to Hex Caliber. So I wanted to know more about the other two, and I really wanted to learn more about the uh, about Invisible Ink too. So yeah, I had to get rid of the one that wasn't one of those two. It was hard. What's your favorite smash up combo? Oh. Um mine I mean it's hard for me to pick a combo because I have not played most of the combos. So shapeshifters, yeah. wizards is probably my favorite. I like the I wizards played. as well. Um Zombie Wizards. I just got the new faction Sheep, Eric. Yes, I got that as well. I, you know, you could sign oh, up as like a holiday too? bonus. Yeah. All right. What's your biggest fear for the future of board games, of the board gaming hobby? Ah, uh, I fear that good games are going to get lost in the shuffle more and more. 
Um, and I fear that sometimes people in the hobby are so intent on keeping their fractured part of the hobby live and well that they don't care about the hobby as a whole. Hmm. I, I fear that some of the conventions are going to become so big that the experience is not going to be worth it anymore. I, I, I worry that about Gen Con already. That it's just so big and the city yes, but is... I, so I, I talked to the Gen Con president. He realizes that that is a problem, so they're trying to make it better in that regard. They have some things they're working on. Okay. Well, I, I await their response, I guess. Rebecca says, Tom, how much of your income comes from YouTube commercials? Not very much, which is why we run a Kickstarter. <laughs> have either of you played Container? What did you think? I didn't see a Dice Tower review of it on YouTube. I have not played Container. I played Container way back in the day, and I hated it so very much. Uh, <laughs> Container. The thing I hated about Container was you're selling like resources and things, but you brought a ship in and then sold them to someone, and then that person sold them to somebody else, which could be you. You couldn't sell them to yourself, so you were like selling them, and you could like make the price really low just to undercut other people. I don't know. It, it felt like too much of a. I sell to you, then you sell back to me, then I do this, and I, I wasn't a big fan, but some people really love it. Mm. Do you ever take a break from playing games? I do all the time. I have to work. Well, I do too, but I mean, people are like, do you take a break from playing games? Sure. Like, I'll, for me, like, if I go to convention and we play games, play, play, play games, and I'll be like, okay, I need a break. I'll go eat dinner, go watch a movie, and then I can play games again. I don't need to take like a week break. Yeah. Some hours is fine for me <laughs> because I'm not like, as soon as this video is not off, I'm not going to be like, all right, let's get back to playing games. Psh, kids in here. Down <laughs> bed, we're tired. Four more games before bed. <laughs> yeah. If you were to name a disease and pandemic, what would it be? Wow. Serious questions. Yeah. Um, I mean, we did in Pandemic Legacy, right? Um, what did I call them? I can't remember. There was one that looked like hot dogs, so we called it like hot dog itis. It's not a very good name. <laughs> yeah, we called one Vasilis at one point, but that's kind of boring. Yeah. What did we name our first one? I think we named it like a bunch of letters. In, in pandemic, you can name the diseases. So we named them all something. Right. I think we had Red Death. And uh, we named them like the colors, like Blue Moon. I forget what they were all called. <laughs> um, how do you pick out games for live play? I try to pick ones I think will be interesting. Um, uh, this person, they love to see Dinosaur Island or Pulsar 2080-49. But we did Pulsar 2080-49 live. You can see that one. Um, I also try to pick games that can be seen on a camera. See, I haven't played Dinosaur Island because it's such a huge table presence. It would be hard to fit that one on the camera. Hmm. Um, have we ever played Once Upon a Time? Isn't that like a classic storytelling game? Oh, you've never played it? No. Yeah, Once Upon a Time is a game where you are telling a story and so someone will tell a story and they play a card and someone else will they'll keep telling the story and you play cards and someone else can interrupt and play a card. And it's a fun experience, but it's a horrible game because a cheesy player will find a way to throw the cards in there to, to, you know, get rid of all the cards from their hand. Yeah. A little like I dark overlord. If somebody just, you know, cheesily adds elements into their story. Um, is there any plans to do some game events outside North America besides Essen and UK Games Expo? And the answer to that question is yes. And I will tell you soon what that is. <laughs> Except that that does not actually mean Eric or me. Yeah. Um, are you interested in Empires of the Void 2? It actually came in the mail today. And it what? looks gorgeous. You I just, guy. I didn't even crack the shrink on it yet. I know. But why wasn't that one of our options? Because I'm trying to pick unknown games. It's not going to be fun if there's like a popular, oh, no, no, here's Gloomhaven. And then. <laughs> <laughs> so now that, um, now that you know, you're sending it to me, yeah, yeah, sure. Of the six games today, did you ever hear of any of them before? Uh, I think the jump in game, I was at the booth when they brought it at Essen. So I had heard of that one. 
Okay, but I mean, they're not games that are on anyone's radar, I don't think. I don't think so. That makes it more fun. Um, let's see. Eric, have you played Pulsar 2849? I have. Yeah, I'm actually going to teach it at ConCon Con coming up in March. Right, so how do you feel about that, considering you love merchants? I don't think they're anything alike, actually. They are very, no. They're, I don't really connect it at all. There's a little bit that of exploration aspect flying around, uh, but it's for a totally different reason. You're not picking up and delivering anything. Yeah, I don't really connect it. Pulsar is much more about getting the technology tree and uh, um, you know resource selection, the, the dice selection. It's, it's a different beast entirely. Tom, you called Eric Voice of the People as Z been overthrown. I think they've both been overthrown because if you go to Board Game Geek and look at the number one game, it's Gloomhaven. <laughs> so who does that make the voice of the people? I'm just saying. So I think I think the distinction is I'm the voice of the people, and Z is the voice of the people. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see here. What was the most pointless module from an expansion or most pointless full expansion? There's not a lot of there's a lot of expansions where I'll see a module and I'll go, I ain't playing with that. Like, like, hey, would you like to add some total randomness to this game that normally doesn't have it? No. Mm. <laughs> Marco Polo expansion. And that has, what? I think, like three modules in it. And one of them was okay. Uh, but sometimes the play game, I'll be like, neat, neat. That's dumb. And I, I can't think of it off the top of my head, though. Flux dice. Oh, Let's add, add some more randomness to Flux. Yeah, it's funny. I just sent the big giant box of games. Yeah, we do one for Jack Bass Memorial Fund. Um, so I sent a big box of games to the winner of that, and I jammed the whole box full of things, a lot of shrink wrap games that we had and everything. It was, it was a pretty good value, right? And I had a little space in the top. And I was like, there's two boxes of Flux. Perfect. And it filled the box. <laughs> Initial thoughts on hate. Have you seen the Kickstarter from Simon? Uh, I saw it. I've seen a lot of reaction to the video, and people are not happy. I didn't watch the whole thing, so I don't know what people are reacting to. The video is kind of like a juvenile, buy this game, it's awesome, and also just in case you want to know how awesome it is, let me curse briefly. Beep! That's how awesome this game is. That's how the whole video comes across. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean... I'm not, I'm not someone who curses anyway, but even if I was, in this one, it felt like they were like, kids, you can curse too. <laughs> I, I what? felt that way. The game itself is also about death and hate and killing everybody else and then yeah. dragging their bodies back and cooking them and eating them. It's definitely not for everybody. Not for me. Yeah, this doesn't look like your game at all, despite nope. the theme, right? It's, it's still, you know, it's a... Yeah. yeah. Um... Let's see here. Uh, we'll answer a couple more questions. How quickly do Dice Tower Convention shows and events get filled up? Fastest filling up one we have. I don't think we've ever had one where people like cry that they can't get in. Right. Our Gen Con one sells out and our um, Essen one, we give out all the tickets for that one. Yes. But at the Essen one, every year we have said, the last two years we said, come to the booth Friday morning. And people run the booth and line up, but everybody who came got a ticket. Now, there are people who came by a couple hours later and they didn't get tickets, right? Right. And that time frame may shorten as the year goes go by. Right. The Gen Con show that's sold online, that all depends. It sells out and it's sold out fairly quickly, like within a couple weeks. But again, if you didn't get a ticket. Right. I feel like uh, the Gen Con show, before we got to move into the larger rooms, that one sold. There was one year that it sold out very, very quickly, like when it was only 350 tickets or so. That one went fast. Yeah, that's true. How did we give out the tickets to that one? Oh, no, you just had well, that one online. That's that right. was on, yeah, part of the Gen Con system. Again, I some people don't cancel your container orders based on my opinion. Remember, it. It just wasn't my style game. It might be a great game. I haven't played it in... Wow, it's been a really long time since I played it. I played it the same day I played Agricola. I remember that. I played them back-to-back oh, wow. back for the first time, both of them. Okay. So then again, you had to 
Agricola. I'm like, why are we wasting time in this container garbage? Let's play more Agricola. Got it. Um. Have you ever attended Geekway to the West? I have not. No. But if that opportunity ever arose, I think I would. It sounds really fun. It sounds really similar to Dice Tower Con, honestly. Mm. Or I'm not trying to take credit. Dice Tower Con sounds like Geekway to the West. How's that? Yeah, Geekway has been around for a long time. How many years has it has it been? Do you know? How long Ge Geekway to the West has been going? Yeah. I don't know. It's been several years. It feels like one of the institutions of the con circuit. Okay, some questions about when we'll start broadcasting on Twitch. It's going to take a bit, okay? We're going to do some practice. Uh, well, first, we have to hit the goal, 250000 on our Kickstarter. I hope we do. looks possible. Uh, we're going to start practicing with it offline because we don't know anything about Twitch, and we're going to learn. We're going to practice Twitch. Twitch does not mean we're going to stop broadcasting on YouTube. We're going to try to simulcast on both. There will be times where we will do something only maybe on one or the other. That will probably lean more towards YouTube than anything else. We're hoping broadcasting on Twitch will bring us a bigger and new audience. Um, so we will announce the conventions that we are at soon. We're getting there. And I think that's it. We got to end this show now. It's been an hour. This oh. game show that you saw today, we're going to continue this in the future. I think that was fun. Uh, yes. Because I was trying to think of something different to do because I talk about games all the time, more so than Eric does on video, and so I'm repeating myself a little bit, so this seemed like something different. Tell us what you think about it in the comments after this is over. If you like that, maybe we'll do it again. Um, or maybe we'll do other kinds of game shows and things. Actually, one of the stretch goals is Eric and I will do some more live game shows over the course of the year. And that would be something separate from Dice Tower tonight, correct? That would be. That would be a separate show. Yeah. Okay. Well, folks, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Eric Summer. And you've been watching Dice Tower tonight. Thanks for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. In order to catch up, Tom and I will see you next week for another installment. Our show is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Dice Tower Tonight is produced by Tom and me with assistance from Derek Porter and Rob Searing. Using corn instead of beans as a means to reach the giant's castle provided by Magic Maze. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff Inc. Where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at Board Game Geek on Facebook or Twitter. Facebook or Twitter? Facebook or Twitter or by emailing us at dicetower at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, have fun gaming. Woo! Woo, indeed. Team Sloth.